All right, welcome to our video here on output analysis. Really, this is a focal or important part of the agribusiness and farm management area. And be an active learner. As I write on the board and talk about information, do the same on your notes. That'll help you retain the information and answer the questions that come later better. All right, what is output analysis? Well, it's this idea that as a production person, as a producer, we have alternative outputs that we can try to achieve. We can try to achieve smaller output levels of production, but that's going to be smaller total revenue, total profit, very likely. However, if we achieve higher production areas, more customers, more product, more carrots harvested for the farmer's market, more corn grown, more higher weighted gain calves in the feed yard, all of those things are going to require additional money. So as a producer, that's the question. What output level should I achieve or try to achieve to make the most money? Well, to do that, you're going to have to look at two things. The two things needed to determine profit are revenue and cost. So in this video, we're going to go over common approaches to cost analysis as well as profit and identifying profit. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I have an example already built for you here today, and quantity is the product that I am producing. And so when I come underneath the quantity, this is my product that I sell. Now, taking notes here along with me, what would you do? You would write zero because that is a choice not to produce anything at all. And then I have simple 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 to work for our example. So this is the product that we sell or sometimes identified as a quantity. All right, when you have a quantity, you have cost. And I can divide cost into really two categories. The first category are called fixed cost. And you can notice right here that if I do nothing, I still pay $80. And in this case, it represents an acre of my production. So $80 is what I will pay in total fixed cost, or in this case, just fixed cost. Now, another word for fixed cost to be aware of is this is called a sunk cost. That didn't write very well here. Let's do it again. This is called a sunk cost. So S-U-N-K. Now sunk cost is uh, just trying to kind of tell us another word that this is fixed. Sunk costs really do not matter to us. Once we decide to produce, it's $80. If you produce all the way to 60, it's $80. All right, now the other costs are going to be looking at called variable cost. And these are, are what we sometimes call a production cost. So if I decide to get out and go produce, then these costs are going to be the cost that I incur. And so really another way to look at these these are your minimum price values because I've got to cover these variable costs. Now, total cost is I'm just adding these together and sometimes this is a focus of what we call break even because if I can create enough revenue to cover these costs, depending on what I want to uh, achieve, that's going to be what we call, again, a break even. All right, so we've talked enough about what you typically know. You typically know a product, and you typically take the cost and try to know it at each level, and you break that cost into fixed cost and variable cost, and then, of course, you got total cost by just adding these two together. All right, so what are some common steps in analysis? And I have these answers worked out here, but let's go over these so you can take notes and follow along at how we get this done. Well, the first one is going to be something called average fixed cost. And I'm going to come down here underneath my uh, listing of what I have and talk about what's the formula for this. And it's really easy. It's just your fixed cost divided by the quantity that you produce. So the result is a dollar per one quantity. And so what is fixed cost every time you produce? Well, the first level is zero production. So I'm going to put an NA there because it really doesn't matter for that. But the next level is $80 divided by 10. So of course that is going to be eight. Now the next level, if we have the same $80 because it doesn't change, it's divided by 20. So now that is four and these are in dollars and I'm going to keep going from here. Now, as we go through the rest of these, you can imagine that fixed cost or average fixed cost starts to drop. And why would it start to drop? Because fixed cost is the same number 
divided by this same cost, but a growing number of production, sorry. Another way to look at fixed cost, and it gets used as a definition, but it is called economies of scale. Meaning, the larger I am as a production business, the more efficient I become. You really only gain most of that efficiency in fixed cost. So fixed cost is going to start off high and drop down low. So if you try to produce a lot of production, you will end up with lower and lower and lower fixed cost. That's another reason why we call those sunk, because they really start to go away if we can get enough production out there. Sunk cost or fixed cost, average fixed cost, explains why agriculture has become so large as a business. Because we have a high fixed cost. Buildings, machinery, uh, the land itself, these costs are huge in agriculture. And they end up being a very expensive part of our business. So how do we manage that as an agricultural producer? We farm more acres, we have more cows, we milk more cows, we have more feeder pigs in the feed yard. We've got to increase production. So economies of scale is a big deal for agriculture, and this kind of shows why. Now, average variable cost is the next one. So what would you imagine the formula is for that? It's just going to be variable cost divided by the quantity. And so we can do that, and it's going to give you the same dollar per one quantity. And so each quantity is going to have a cost, and variable cost is going to give us numbers each way. All right, when you look at the first level of variable cost, we're producing nothing, so we have nothing. That's our average. But as you move through here, average variable cost does start to change, and it's going to be $4.30 as we move through. It's going to be $2.75 as we move through. So I'm taking my 55 divided by my 20. The next one is I move through my average variable is going to be 217. And so notice what is fixed cost average, excuse me, variable cost doing as we produce more and more. It's falling as well. That's also a little bit of economies of scale as well. But what's going to happen with variable cost is going to be the 217, the 213, and then the next is going to be okay, it's going back up now. 240. The next one's 282, and then finally the last one is 386. And now again, I'm getting these by taking my variable cost of 270 divided by 70, which gives me 386. So average variable cost for most producers will drop in the beginning, and that's because we become very efficient with our use of these inputs. What's a variable cost? Things like feed, seed, veter veterinary care of livestock. These are costs that change based on the quantities we produce. Well, if we start getting more production, our fertilizer gives us a better increase in production as we start using fertilizer. If we start using tractor time in the fields, we start increasing the crop really fast. But if you keep doing that, you're still going to get some production increases, but it's going to take a little more money to get that done. Now, where are we most profitable? Well, if you try to answer that question right now, you're going to be too far ahead because all I know is what things cost me. I haven't talked about what this product I sell for gives me. So you can't answer profit here. You just know that our cost is dropping, but somewhere around this 40 level of production, it starts to go to 50 to go up, to 60 to go up, and to 70 to keep going up. However, if our product we sell is worth it, there may be nothing wrong with these areas. All right, let's look at the next one. The next one is average total cost. And if we go across here, we're going to take these total values now and divide them. So the first answer we're going to get here with average total cost is kind of an NA because we don't know these things. By the way, you can just add these together as you go. And so 8 plus 430 or divide 123 by 10, you're going to end up with $12.30. And then we're going to move there at 675. Next one is 483. Next one is 413. Next one's going to be right at, yeah, $4. Next one's going to be 415. And the next one's going to be $5. Now, of course, 
you can tell that these are going to do the same thing. They're going to start high and drop, and they're going to go right back up because they're just following variable cost. In fact, that, that is probably one thing to make sure that we note here. That's why variable cost really is important to our business because variable cost is the one that's influencing this total cost. In fact, when we came across here, we also talked about something over here, variable cost per unit. So average variable cost, it tells you something. It tells you your minimum price that you will be able to take for your product because I need to cover these variable costs. If I'm going to start production, I need to at least cover these. What about fixed costs? Well, probably first thing is, what is the formula? So let's just be consistent. We take total cost and divide it by quantity just like we did in the others. Or you can add these two together, either one. But what does average total cost give you? It's all your costs put together. So really, it is a break-even price is what it is. And so, for example, if you were looking at producing at 50 units of production and you ran across here, you're talking about spending $4 per unit. So if you have a product that's worth, let's say, five, then that's going to be a dollar profit. Easy to use total cost to figure out break even or even profit per unit at a particular level. All right, well, the last analysis that we want to go over before we start using this is that these are all great. They tell us the value at each level. But remember, another term in our economics or ag business is marginal. What's the value of a change? So what if you decided to produce at zero? Well, there's no decision there, so let's just mark that out. But what if you wanted to go from zero to 10? That is going to be a change of 10 units. In fact, all of these to keep it simple, or changes by 10. But the question is, what is your cost change by? And so if you go from zero to 10, there is a division or a change there, and that change is going to be $43 change. In fact, I did these out here. We usually like to try to look at these. What's the change when you go from 10 to 20? That change is, it looks like, uh, $12. So a lot less change because, again, variable cost is making us a little more efficient here. Fixed cost, of course, is too, but it's, we don't control it any. What's the next change? The next change is 10. What's the next change? It's 20. What's the next change? What is that? Uh, 35, yeah. What's the next change here? It looks like 49. And then what's the last change? It is 101. So these are our changes in cost of production. And these are going to help us answer marginal cost because it is a change in your total cost divided by a change in the quantity that you produce. So it's the same deal, except it is a change. Remember, that's the little triangle here. So it's the change in our total cost per one unit of quantity just like all these others are. They are all based on one unit of quantity. So these are gonna be helpful for us as well. And so what does it look like? Well, if you go from zero to 10, that's a $43 change. You got 10 more units, so that is $4.30. That's the cost of that change. Well, if you decide to produce more, then that's going to be a cost of 12 divided by the 10. That is a dollar 20. So why did our cost go down so much? Remember, variable is dropping fast as well as fixed. And so these things are helping us. All right, what if you decide to go from 30 or 20, I should say, to 30? That cost change is going to be a simple dollar. And if you keep moving through there, the next one is going to be a $2 change. And now we've got a 35, so that's $3.50. The next one's a 49, that's $4.90. And the next one's a 101, so that's $10.10. Remember, these are all dollar values as we go. All right, so we've got our change in cost. We've got our average cost, and these values can help us move forward. How do we figure out where the most profitable looking at all these stages? Well, we have a cost. What do you need now? You need a revenue, and I call that marginal revenue.
So marginal revenue down here is part of our analysis, but it's definitely not the same as these. These are expenses. So let me do this one. Marginal revenue is easy. It's just equal to whatever the price of our quantity is. And so let's just say that we are selling our quantity for a $5 sales price per one unit. Well, all of these are based on the one unit of that quantity, even the change in cost. So if we start to analyze stage by stage, is it worth it? I'm going to mark this first one out. So is it worth it to go from zero to 10? What's it, what is it going to bring you per unit? What's your change in revenue? Remember, marginal is, stands for change in revenue. That's what this is. Well, the change in revenue is going to be $5. Now, is it worth it to spend $4.30 to go from zero to 10 to get five bucks? The answer is yes, it is. So I put that in my hip pocket and I decide, let's go to the next stage, 10 to 20. I have an answer. That's $1.20. Is it worth it to spend $1.20 and get five? You bet you it is. I'm going to put that extra money in my pocket. Next one is a dollar. Is it worth it to spend a dollar to get five? The answer is, of course, yeah. I like that even better than the earlier stages, but we were having to deal with a bunch of fixed cost right away. So that fixed cost is leaving us. Variable cost, we're getting more efficient. So of course these costs are dropping. Now this cost starts to go up. I still spend $2 to get five. Some people stop right here, but that is not correct. You get to put this extra money in your pocket. Remember, we're doing the marginal analysis, the change. That's really what I'm comparing here. These values over here, averages, and they get answer questions for me, but this is the one I want because I'm trying to determine now profit. And remember with profit, you need two things. What are they? A cost and a revenue. All right, so is it worth it to spend $3.50 to get five? If you're still with me, then yeah, we're still worth it. Is it worth it to spend $4.90 to get five? So we're going from 50 to 60. That cost you $4.90. You get five. The answer is yep, that's worth it. So you keep going. Is it worth it to go from 60 all the way to 70? And the answer here is spending 10 bucks to get five. And the answer is no. However, our real answer is somewhere between these. And so maximum profit is found between the marginal revenue and the marginal cost value. And in fact, if we go back and look here, that is where our profit is found. And if we go back and look to our very beginning and run across here, that is going to be somewhere between 60 and 70 units of production. All right, so that's, that's cost analysis using average variable and average fix. There are some common questions to answer. And so let's do those questions like so. What are the common questions to answer? And let's just do them at 60 units of quantity. What is your minimum price that you would take? Well, if you run across here at 60, minimum price is which of these columns, what cost must I cover? Fixed, variable, or am I worried about total here? The answer is going to be variable, and so it looks like that is a price of 282. That would be your minimum price. What about a break-even price? Well, that's going to be your total cost. So that's going to be, it's going to take $4.15 as a price to break even. What are we selling our product for? The answer is five. So we're making money. All right. What about um, maximum profit of this whole table? So maximum profit of the whole table. What's the question for that? Well, that's where marginal revenue and marginal costs get used. And you will keep moving from stage to stage until you get to the stage where they equal each other. And that is going to be somewhere between, I don't know the exact number, somewhere between 60 and 70 quantity units of production.
Okay, hopefully this goes over an important area for you called cost analysis. Learning how to calculate the important terms that are here helps you answer some questions and see efficiencies or economies of scale as we produce more. But marginal analysis, marginal cost and marginal revenue actually help you identify the most important part of this whole table is where are we most profitable in our production output. Thanks.